Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door on a day best fitting for perhaps our topic, and that's frogs, specifically the gray tree frog. In today's episode, I'll show you how to identify the gray tree frog, break down its scientific name for you, and then I'll follow it up with five fascinating facts about gray tree frogs. The facts include, one, they're amazing climbers. Two, they can change their color. Three, they're incredibly toxic. Four, they can withstand freezing. And five, go back again to the amazing fact that they will lay their eggs in crazy places to try to take advantage of survival. Hang tight and let me introduce you to the biology of the gray tree frog. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And here's the make this invasive. It's exhausting. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's. To identify and distinguish gray tree frogs from other tree frogs, the two things to look for is an eye patch, a white patch right underneath the eye. And if they move their legs, look underneath or inside their legs and you'll see this bright orange yellow color. That bright yellow color on the legs might be flashed at predators to either confuse them or say, hey, bright orange, you know what that means. That means I must be poisonous or toxic to you. And in fact, the frog does have toxic secretions. There are actually two species of gray tree frogs that appear superficially to be identical. In fact, the only way to be absolutely sure if you have a gray tree frog or a copse tree frog is to do genetic testing. Cope's gray tree frog has two sets of 12 chromosomes or a total of 24. So their chromosome number is 12. Compare that to humans. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, one set from your mother, one set from your father. So where the humans have a set of 23 chromosomes and they have two sets, so a total of 46, Cope's gray tree frog has 12 chromosomes, two sets for a total of 24. Now compare that to the gray tree frog. It is tetraploid. That means it has four sets of chromosomes. So where it should have 24, as you expect, like the Cope's gray tree frog, it actually has 48 chromosomes. It has four sets of 12. So that is the genetic difference between them. And I think a great topic for later this winter, I'll talk more about chromosomes. You know, I love breaking down scientific names from Latin and Greek. The scientific name, of course, you know, is binomial nomenclature. It's made up of a genus and species name. Genus name for both frogs, hyla means belongs in the woods. So these tree frogs are both arboreal species. They certainly live in the woods. So that's a really good part of the name. So the scientific name for Cope's gray tree frog, Hyla chrysocellius. Hyla chrysocellius. Hyla means belongs to the woods. And chrysocellius, the first part of the word means gold. And the second part of the word from Latin means a spot. And so the gold spot is referring to the bright orange yellow on the back of its legs. The other tree frog, gray tree frog, its scientific name is Hyla versicolor. Versa meaning various, color of course meaning color. So it means of the woods with various colors. And in fact, this frog can change its colors. For both of these frog species, the male makes the calls and attracts the females, establishes territory, or tells another male frog, hey, get out of here, I'm a male frog. And they do it by pulling air underneath their chin and it blows up into almost like a balloon and releasing that air. Scientists can tell the difference between the calls of the gray tree frog and the Cope's gray tree frog. <laughs> I can't tell the difference, I'm not good enough. And also call is based on temperature. So one call is usually slower than the other, but if the temperature is warmer, it'll speed up. So there's always a lot of variability in biology. Let's get to our five fascinating facts about the gray tree frogs. Fact number one, these guys can change their color like a chameleon. It's really cool. If you put them on different backgrounds, 
they will change their colors. Apparently, they also change colors in response to temperature and humidity and whether they're frightened or not. But it's really fascinating to see this frog, how it can change its color. Sometimes it'll be really, really green. Sometimes it'll be mottled. A lot of times it will match the bark. And you can see in the places that I put him, he really blended in with whatever background I put him on. Fascinating fact number two. These frogs release a toxic secretion. You've heard about the poison dart frog in South America that has an incredibly toxic secretion from its skin that natives would use to tip their arrows. This one isn't that toxic. You won't feel or sense its toxicity with just touching one or holding one. But if you hold one and then put your fingers in your eyes afterwards, your eyes are going to burn for 30 minutes or more. So so this is a toxin that's released by the frog to prevent predation by other organisms and it has a very strong bad taste and will give a burning sensation in the mouth. So these guys defend themselves with this toxicity that they release. And sometimes they'll flash that orange. It indicates to the predators, hey, remember that universal coloration? And we've talked about that several times in my videos. That bright orange means I'm toxic and you don't want to eat me. To gray tree frog, fun fact number three. These guys are great climbers. <laughs> I mean, they're really good. And when I was filming this particular individual, it was actually a she, and so I need to correct myself if I said he earlier. This frog was an amazing climber and she had really long legs and the legs are strong they can grab on with a branch with just their toes and pull their whole body up easily and she would take big jumps while i was filming her i was fortunate enough to have a, a friend had this particular frog uh, in captivity it's a rescue frog and so i had a great opportunity to film it and i'm very grateful for that so these frogs live in treetops and they spend most of their time up in the treetops where they're feeding on insect larvae, caterpillars, flies, virtually any insect that they can catch. And they can catch insects pretty fast as you can see in this clip where I put a, a cricket out and it was gone in seconds. I couldn't believe how fast they were. So living life in trees, they're really great on branches. They can jump from branch to branch. While I was filming, this guy jumped out of the film area and onto one of my lamps and they can just cling. Uh, wow, they can really cling. And when I picked them up in my hands, you would feel how sticky your feet was. Almost like a, a plastic toy frog that you can buy to throw against a window and it'll stick to almost anything. This was just like the plastic toy frogs that I've seen that just stick to everything. And if you look at these big toes on this fan and these big feet and these big pads on each one, you can see they're really well adapted to climbing. So they stay up in the trees pretty much all the time unless it's breeding season where they come down to lay eggs in ponds or lakes or water or whatever they can find. Sometimes they're attracted to lights around your house so very often people find great tree frogs on the walls or near their house because there's so many insects attracted to those lights the frogs come down to take advantage of that as well fascinating fact number four great tree frogs like other reptiles and amphibians are ectotherms they cannot control their own body temperature and we are endotherms and we do keep our body temperature up we can control it we can produce our own heat. Ectotherms can't. So all amphibians and reptiles have to hibernate for the winter. Well, the gray tree frog will have to come down out of its trees and try to dig into the leaf litter or under a log or into loose soil or under a stump to try to hibernate and escape from freezing temperatures. <laughs> However, the gray tree frog has been measured at negative eight degrees Celsius. That's 17 degrees Fahrenheit. That is well below the freezing temperature. And so much of the body of the frog actually freezes or is protected by an antifreeze by concentrating glucose. So these incredible frogs will come right back to life after they warm up again. In fact, scientists have seen them undergo several cycles of freezing and thawing 
and come out okay. So the really amazing fact about tree frogs is their ability to actually become frozen at a temperature 17 degrees Fahrenheit. That's negative eight Celsius. Really incredible thing. Fascinating fact number five. This goes back to the first episode I did on great tree frogs where I found tadpoles in a rock at 3,199 feet above sea level, completely exposed to sun elements. And there couldn't have been more than a gallon or two of water in that puddle in a piece of sandstone rock on the summit. So this fascinating fact is that great tree frogs will often lay their eggs in surprising places. And one of the biological reasons for that is that their eggs and tadpoles are greatly subjected to predation by fish. So one of their avoidance mechanisms, one of their adaptations to avoid their offspring from eat, being eaten by fish is to lay their eggs in vernal pools, which are called temporary ponds, or in buckets or on pool covers or in an outdoor container. People are finding gray tree frog tadpoles in the most unusual areas. And it's just part of their adaptation to have their offspring in places that may be safe from predators. And they're just going to take advantage of whatever they find. And so the tadpoles will mature from a hatched egg to a adult form with legs in maybe four to six weeks. And I think I've read even as little as four weeks from egg to a metamorphosized frog. Gray tree frog, cope straight tree frog. Different by the number of chromosomes. One is diploid, one is tetraploid. I need to do a lesson on that coming up. So I hope you enjoyed this episode on a very common tree frog that has a wide distribution across the United States. Amazing biology, ability to defend itself with skin secretions, its ability to withstand freezing in the winter, its ability to um, lay eggs in ponds and pools and temporary puddles almost anywhere. Its ability to change colors and camouflage itself from predators. And what an amazing climbing ability for this arboreal tree frog species. Hope you enjoyed watching Nature at Your Door. And if you like what I do, please subscribe. Please share with teachers, friends, homeschoolers, and get outside and see what you can find. Thanks for watching.